Greetings everyone. You're watching the channel Aviation Obsession. Get ready to step into the world of aviation nostalgia because we're taking a trip back to the era of the eye-catching MD-11. Imagine an aircraft that turned heads with its three-engine setup, the MD-11 was a real head-turner. But hey, let's spill the tea, despite its promises, the aircraft, especially in its passenger version, didn't quite meet expectations, leading to its eventual downfall. So, in this video, we'll talk about the rise and fall of the McDonnell Douglas MD-11. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for future uploads. Without further ado, let's get started. Over three decades ago, in January 1990, the MD-11 took to the skies for the first time, flaunting its unique charm. But wait, the story doesn't start there. Let's rewind even further to the McDonnell Douglas trijet design that paved the way. Remember the DC-10? That beauty made its debut in August 1970, sharing the skies with icons like the Boeing 747. The DC-10 was no wallflower, it sold like hotcakes, with 386 units flying off the shelves and an additional 60 KC-10 tanker variants joining the party. Now, here's where it gets interesting. As the mid-70s rolled around, McDonnell Douglas had its creative gears turning. They had their eyes set on giving the existing DC-1010 and DC-1030 versions a stretch to remember. But as fate would have it, accidents involving the DC-10 started clouding its reputation. Fresh DC-10 orders took a nosedive, and in 1984, the company decided it was time for a makeover. Ta-da! The MD-11 was born, with a new name and a mission to shine brighter. Alright, let's fast forward to December 1986, a time when the McDouglas MD-11 program was officially kicked off. Can you believe they scored a whopping 52 solid orders and even had 40 more options in the bag? Talk about a grand entrance. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty. Picture this, assembly kicked off in 1988 with all the excitement you can imagine. But hold up, remember the DC-10's not-so-great rep after a series of unfortunate accidents? Well, the MD-11 was here to turn things around. With a snazzy two-person glass cockpit, it was all about embracing the digital age. No more flight engineers on board, that's some serious space-saving wizardry right there. But that's not all, let's talk wings. McDonnell Douglas teamed up with NASA for some winglet magic, making the MD-11 even sleeker. The MD-11 was like the DC-10's cooler, upgraded sibling. It had a bigger body, 36 feet longer, to be exact, coming in at a whopping 202 feet. It was equipped with General Electric CF-6 or Pratt & Whitney PW4000 engines, allowing it to reach about 580 miles per hour. And you won't believe this, it could fit around 298 passengers in three different classes. Moving on to the range game, the DC-10's Dash 30 model had a range of 5,200 nautical miles. But guess what? The MD-11 raised the bar with a jaw-dropping 6,725 nautical miles of range. And just like that, McDouglas was on a roll, looking to leave DC-10's woes behind. The aircraft didn't waste time either, it took its first flight in January 1990. And guess what? By the end of that same year, it was already soaring the skies in service with Finnair, starting its journey on December 20th. That's how the MD-11 strutted onto the aviation stage with style. The Finnish flag carrier took the stage with a whopping 7 MD-11s that whisked passengers away to their destinations. And hold on, they weren't just about people, they also rocked two cargo-configured MD-11Fs in their early days. Talk about versatility. Now, let's chat numbers. The MD-11 came with a price tag that would make anyone's eyes pop, around $100 million back in the day, which would be a jaw-dropping $209 million in today's world. But here's a twist, the very first MD-11s actually cost even more to make, even though they were kind of similar to the good old DC-10. Now, brace yourselves, the initial production costs were between $120 and $150 million, and that meant, at first, the MD-11 was a bit of a financial frown. But, hey, don't lose hope. The master plan was to slash those costs down to $90 million over time. And guess what? Between 1988 and 2000, the aviation wizards at McDonnell Douglas managed to cook up just 200 MD-11s. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, hold on to your seat, cause there's more to the story. Now, here's a fun fact, out of these 200 MD-11s, a massive chunk, 131, to be precise, rolled out as the standard passenger carrying version. So, whether it was flying high with passengers or zipping around with cargo, the MD-11 was definitely making its mark on the aviation scene. 
hold on to your aviation hats folks, cause we're diving into some fascinating MD-11 variants and numbers. Now, alongside the 53 cargo carrying MD-11Fs, there are some rarer birds in the mix. We're talking about the MD-11C, which is super exclusive, with only 5 of these babies ever made. And believe it or not, the MD-11ER, which stands for extended range, matches that same count. And hey, there's a cool twist, 6 MD-11CFs that can convert from freighter to passenger mode. Now, let's see who's been rocking these passenger MD-11s. Former Brazilian carrier Varig takes the crown with a whopping 24 of them. Swiss Air and American Airlines are in a close race with 20 and 19 MD-11s, respectively. And guess what? Delta's in the mix too, flying high with 17 MD-11s. But wait, there's a cargo twist. FedEx takes the crown with the biggest current fleet of MD-11Fs, a whopping 59 of them are taking to the skies, delivering packages all over. Alright, let's talk facts. The MD-11 had its share of ups and downs, and one key reason for its relatively short 12-year production run was its struggle to meet certain targets. The range and fuel efficiency weren't quite hitting the mark as expected. Even American Airlines expressed their lackluster feelings about the 19 MD-11s they received, and there were whispers of airframe and engine issues. Singapore Airlines even switched to the Airbus A340-300 instead of sticking with their MD-11 order. Alright folks, let's get real about the MD-11's performance. So, on paper, it was supposed to hit that awesome 6725 nautical mile range, but hold on to your seats, in reality, it could only pull it off if it dropped more than 20% of its payload, down to 48,500 pounds. And if it dared to fly with a full load, its wings were clipped to just 6,493 nautical miles. Yeah, the struggle was real. Things got a bit rocky for the MD-11. The competition got tough, especially with Boeing stepping into the ring after taking over McDonnell Douglas. This pushed the MD-11 out of production by the year 2000. Now, remember those good old days when the MD-11 was the star of passenger flights? It had its heyday, but the chapter concluded in 2014 when KLM retired the final passenger MD-11. But guess what? It found a new gig, the world of air freight. The MD-11 isn't done yet, with a whopping 108 still active as cargo champions. These birds have some serious staying powers, so don't be surprised if you catch one soaring through the skies. What's your take on the legendary MD-11? Ever hopped on one of these tri-jet marvels? Spill the aviation beans in the comments. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and remember to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any suggestions or a certain topic to discuss for the next video.